In this video, you will learn about the qualifications of a lawyer and how to choose one, the role of the lawyer and how they operate, as well as the judge, what it's like to have a judge and how to interact with the judge. Because now we're looking at how copyright infringement proceeds when it gets to court. If you get involved with a lawyer in a copyright case, what you need to know is what the lawyer has done since becoming a lawyer. Uh, what type of firm does the lawyer work for? And what type of actual work is that lawyer doing? For example, the lawyer could be in a, in a practice outside uh, of copyright law. It could be that that law firm is a very prestigious law firm, but the lawyer is not working much in copyright. That's something to be aware of. Um, what is this lawyer like then? Does the lawyer have the experience in copyright law? Does the lawyer know copyright law? Does the lawyer know the music and entertainment industry? What the practices are? What the quirks are? Uh, what certain phrases and contracts know? Let's say, say there's litigation, but there's also transactional law. The lawyer's got to know, really be up on uh, the most current trends and the most current practices and new laws being passed and so forth. You look at the personality of a lawyer and how you feel with that lawyer, how the lawyer interacts with you, um, how the lawyer interacts with other lawyers. Because one thing a lot of us don't consider is that when you're a lawyer representing a client, you're an advocate for the client. So you always do your very best for that client. But at some point, you have to talk to the other side. For example, so if you approach a lawyer and you think your song has been copied from someone, they say someone stole my song. If you think that, the lawyer should give this a good listen and talk to you about it. One of the first questions to, for you to think of also is, how could that person have heard my song? If you're not famous, and if your music's not in a lot of places, how could someone hear your music? That's an important thing called access. Uh, did they have access to, to your music? Okay, saying they did, one of the next things you do is the lawyer needs to give you an assessment of, okay, what's involved in this lawsuit? What are we going to have to do? Does the lawyer think you have a good chance? That's why most lawyers will hire an expert. The person's called an expert and will give expert testimony as to the similarity of the song. So there's a process that's called discovery. You get to learn as much information as you can. People have to be honest with that, and they'll want to discover all the information about you and your surroundings and what led to your creating the song. You will have to get as much information about the other side. How, if you think your song was infringed by someone, say you think the person copied your, your song, you've got to know how did the person write the song, and then how was the song recorded? Um, what were the conversations involved? For ex you know, you think of it, the person did go into a studio, a uh, producer and an engineer were present, one to four to five to 30 musicians were present. How much discussion was there about this song? Did anyone say, you know, that sounds a little like, like this? You know, you'd have to really go into discovering the facts of the case and discovering a lot about the backgrounds of the people. Say if your song was copied, it could be by someone who's got the bad practice of like, liking to copy sometimes. Occasionally you'll meet people who would copy just because they can't come up with their own, as opposed to just accidentally copying. Um, but you need to know all those facts. Then you'll go through a period of depositions where you're asking someone, we, we want to know more about how you think and what you did. If it's an expert witness, you'll want to ask that person, how did you come to that decision? What type of facts and methodology did you use? Both sides want to do this. Both sides really want to end the case. They don't want to say, let's take 10 years and let's take our time and make this expensive and miserable and long. They really can go that long. They'll want to file what's called a motion for summary judgment. And that means you're saying to the court, please dismiss this summarily. To make a summary judgment to dismiss this trial, this case, because the facts are on our side and the other side doesn't have the facts. There's no question about it. Now, while you're filing that, the other side might file the same kind of thing, but spinning it differently from their point of view. And the court then has to decide, are there really facts here? 
now to talk about the judge. The judge is impartial. The judge is a wise woman or a wise man. It's a federal issue, so they've had a lot of experience. You don't just jump into a federal judgeship. But they may not know music well, and they may not even know copyright law well. What both sides have to do, the lawyers for both sides, have to put forth the facts. You have to say it's a violation of Title 17, which is United States copyright law, Section 106, exclusive rights. You spell that out. The judge is going to always come back with interesting questions, things you don't expect, and you have to answer them, you have to respect him, and then the process rolls on from there. But the most important person is the judge, showing your honor, the, the due respect, and uh, answering questions, and doing as the, the, the judge will, will ask. So to sum this up briefly, there's a judge. The judge has respect. You stand when the judge walks in the room. The judge runs the show. The judge knows law well and, and pays attention to precedents, and you do what the judge says. You treat him well. The lawyer, again, you, someone from a, a good law school, someone's admitted to practice in that state, someone who knows the subject well, copyright and intellectual property, and the music and entertainment industry know it well. You can work well with the attorney. You feel good about the attorney. The attorney's showing you respect. The attorney can work with others well, with your own expert witness, with the other side's expert, with the other side's attorneys. And that's uh, some of the things to keep in mind.